one. Hey folks, welcome to uh, Coffee and Revelation on Friday. A wee bit tired today, just driven back from Canberra, but thought we would have uh, a look at this. Uh, second part of the last battle. We're in Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains closed so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Now, as I look at this, just uh, again, you need to go to the rest of the Bible to grasp what is being said. There, there's no need to go and get uh, you know, a speculation about today, if you go to the rest of the Bible. So Matthew, for example, Matthew chapter 24. Let me read just from verse 42. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Thieves don't send advance notices. Okay? It's, that's what Jesus is saying. And all the people who are trying to speculate when Jesus is going to return, we don't know. It will come as a surprise to us. And I think we'll be surprised that we're surprised. We think we can work this out. We can sort this out. I don't think we can. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, 2 Peter 3, 10 says exactly the same thing. Now, what does that mean? It means something very simply. We have to live each day anticipating his return. Uh, the Lord, who knows when the Lord may come back? And the kind of, the mentality, isn't it? It's to kind of go, well, I didn't come back yesterday or the day before or last year or whatever. Where, where's this return of which you're speaking? But that's the point. It will be a surprise. And therefore, we've got a call to clothe ourselves in righteousness. Um, I remember an old brethren man saying to me once, as a, as, a, as a teenage boy, I'd just professed faith as a Christian, and I remember him saying something like, if Jesus came back, would you be embarrassed at what you're doing? And, you know, I thought it was a pretty good thing. Um, you know, like when you're in the house and you may think, oh, it's just me. I can do whatever I want. And then maybe your parents come in or your wife comes in or whatever. Would we ever be doing something that we would be ashamed if Jesus returned? I think that's a fairly decent standard. Now, what's this about the Armageddon as well? And again, it amazes me this. We go, first of all, to the Bible. What does the Bible say? Well, I see how good I am at getting around the Old Testament. Um, Judges. Let's go to Judges chapter 5. And at verse 19, kings came, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought at Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no plunder of silver. Uh, it, it's... First king, from the heavens, the stars fought, from their coasts they fought against Sisera. So Megiddo was the place where righteous Israelites were attacked by wicked nations. And then you get First Kings 1840. First Kings 1840. Then Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets of Baal. Baal, don't let anyone get away. They seized them and Elijah had them brought to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered it there. This is Megiddo, at the Mount of Megiddo, the Kishon Valley. That's where false prophets were slaughtered. And then maybe I'll do one other. Now, this is a real test. Can I find Zechariah? Yes, I can. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 9. On that day I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day, the weeping in Jerusalem will be as great as the weeping of Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. Now, 
what is John trying to tell us? What is John saying to his poor, beleaguered people that he's writing to from his island? What he's saying is this. He's not telling us about a great battle that's going to take place with tanks and guns and nuclear bombs and everything else. That's not what he's saying. He's speaking here about a spiritual battle, not a military one. And he's speaking about Satan's final assault on the church. He can't win. Satan can't win. Jesus is coming back. Satan's final assault will be defeated. False prophets will be destroyed. All the enemies of Christ and his church will be cast into hell. And we will be kept safe and cleansed and pure. The return of Jesus and the defeat of Satan should be constant factors in our thinking about things. Okay, uh, see you on Sunday for Songs for Sunday and see you on Monday as we return to chapter 16 of Revelation. Bye.